Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Salem today. Whether you're here with us in person or you're worshiping with us online, we're so grateful to have you here with us. Um, I'm Alice Johnson, the executive pastor, if I have not met you. And again, just delighted to be with you in worship. We'd like to give you a little bit of an update this morning as it relates to our COVID changes that are going on. We acknowledge this has been a challenging year for all of us and we've had to make so many adaptations. And again, this year or this week, we are making some more. So with the relaxing of the uh, face mask mandate, we find ourselves being able to say, if you are fully vaccinated, we no longer expect that you would be wearing a mask when you're here at Salem. If you are not fully vaccinated or if you are immunocompromised, we would ask that you continue to wear a mask and that you do social distancing just for the sake of all of us. We wanna care for all that are here and worshiping with us. I also want to encourage you to please be gracious to one another. Some are going to wear masks, some are not going to wear them. Some are going to want to be closer to people than others are going to want to be. So wherever anyone is on this journey, let's give grace to one another and encourage one another in these days that are ahead. Over the next few weeks, I will continue to work with our COVID management team, with our leadership team, as we prepare to have more opportunities for us to connect with one another and to do in-person ministry as well. We'll keep you updated on those in a variety of means as well so that you're aware of those changes. So I just encourage you, please, let's work together to get through this transition and the next step in our COVID journey. Shelley, would you lead us into worship? The Lord be with you. with you. Welcome, Salem. Thanks for being here this morning. Uh, it's really good to see your smiles once again. And it's also great that the weather is warming up in this next week, um, I think is a promise that the warmer weather is here to stay. And that reminds me to tell you about our summer calendar. So you can pick up these summer calendars that are loaded with activities and announcements for this summer. And we'll also be keeping the most up-to-date version of this calendar on Salem's website. And we'll continue to add to it as activities are planned. And, you know, after a while of being separated, um, it would be really great if you could try to engage in as many of those as possible. I also wanted to let you know that we are five weeks away from our medical dental clinic called Compassion Clinic that we are working with three other New Brighton churches on collaborating together and hosting. We are still in need of some volunteers for that clinic. Um, anybody is welcome to serve, but specifically, we're looking for dental assistants, those who could offer haircuts, massage, and foot care. Um, but again, anybody is welcome to serve. There's tons of ways to engage. I have put some flyers and a volunteer form. They're red, so you can't miss them. And they're at the Welcome Center if you wanted to grab one and register. Complete the, the volunteer card. You can put it in my mailbox here, um, or you can email it in to me. So thank you. We thank God for the gift of being part of a multi-generational community centered in Christ and the privilege we have of rejoicing with those who rejoice and mourning with those who mourn. Today we mourn with the family of David Cook, who died this past week. I invite you to stand as you are able, as we remember David before God in a moment of silence. Lord of life, we give thanks for the life and faith and loving service of David Cook and for the promise of the resurrection and the gift of eternal life that is ours through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Peace be to his memory. Please remain standing and join me for the call to worship found in your bulletin or on your screen. Happy are those who do not take the path of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season.
Eternal God, thank you for sending your Son to become one of us. Jesus was seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up in glory. Hallelujah for such great gift and so mighty a plan. Today, allow us to comprehend afresh your awesome power. Amen. The New Testament reading is Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, 
the fullness of him who fills all in all. The Gospel reading is Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see... I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. O risen Christ, ascend and
Thank you, Jen. And thank you for leading that clapping and praising God together. This spring, we are celebrating many milestones, including an event later today to recognize the achievements of our Awana students. God is using our Awana program to shape the lives of children and families with the opportunity to love, know, and serve Jesus for a lifetime. Salem's Awana program has continued this past year, and it's for our students in preschool through fifth grade. Um, it's looked a little different this year, but we're really thankful for the families who have helped offer engaging lessons and activities that are meaningful to these kids. It's our collective faithfulness in giving that makes ministry like this possible. When you give to God through Salem's general fund, you are helping to make a difference in the lives of our children and families. You can give to the ministry of Salem by placing your offering in the giving stands just located outside the worship space, mailing a check to the church office, or using the Salem app. And you can also give online. <laughs> Please join me in prayer as we ask God to guide our steps and to use our giving to encourage the hearts of others in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, thank you for these financial gifts to Salem that help us connect, grow, and go with you, with others, and with the world as your disciples. Lord, we recognize the pain in our world today and ask for your intervention, especially in places like India, where the COVID virus is outpacing hospital beds and ventilator capacity. Lord, bring healing. Bring peace and unity to Israel and the Palestinians in Gaza. Lord, you are capable. Please pour out your wisdom daily on us so that we might best know and respond to your calling. Fill us with compassion so that we may see others as you do. Anoint and empower us to share the good news to the lost, the hurting, and the broken. Jesus, we rejoice in the gift it is to call you our Savior and to live as brothers and sisters in Christ. And thank you for teaching us how to live and how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And he said, Woe to me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin forgiven. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Hear and hear, but do not understand. See and see, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people fat, and their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. And I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without men, and the land is utterly desolate, and the Lord removes men from far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. It was the Friday before Thanksgiving in 1963. I was a junior in high school. In the early afternoon, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. Everything came to a stop. Everybody became glued to television. Normal programming canceled. We had unending analysis by news people, politicians, and so-called experts. Then, Sunday morning, Kennedy's killer was shot to death in a police station, of all places, by a guy who ran a strip club, of all things. The nation was reeling. The new president, Lyndon Johnson, called for prayer and worship. We held a special service in the evening at my home congregation, Christ Lutheran in New Jersey, not far from New York City. We had prayer, hymns, then Pastor James Ingvald Upsal, son of Norwegian immigrants, born in Brooklyn, as I was and as were my parents, climbed into the pulpit. What was he going to say? We'd already heard three days of constant commentary, newspaper reports, and conversation. He opened the Bible and began to read, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Uzziah was an honored king of Judah, whose death was a calamity. What were the people of Judah to do? It was a time to reflect on sins, to fear the punishment of God for disobedience, to repent. Pastor Upsall told this ancient story and left it to us sitting in the pew to make the connection between then and now. We were in our time of calamity. Turn to God. Bow before his holy will. It was a fired sermon. 
Here I am nearly 60 years later telling you about it. How often does that happen? <laughs> pastor Upsall was my confirmation pastor, a big deal among Lutherans, especially back then. He was the most important minister in my life. He was there in my years as a teenager. What Pastor Upsall knew was this, that the words of Holy Writ, the prophets in particular, they take you to another world. In them you can see the wreck of your personal life, the bloody pageant on the six o'clock news, the circus of politics, whatever. You see all sorts of things clearly. You see them for what they are. They are exposed, judged by a holy force, not of your making. Who were these people, these prophets who saw so clearly? When the Uzziahs died, when the good times no longer rolled, the prophets were there to look at reality without turning away. The power they display in their proclamation could not possibly have been something within them, so that in speaking, they spoke to themselves. If it were just them engaging in some ancient therapeutic exercise or navel-gazing, how could the words they record reach across the centuries, across millennia? No. Consciousness raising, self-help, self-esteem, political correctness, the world of the selfie were not their business. They would not dream of thinking that if something they said was a word their hearers did not like that they were thus making their hearers victim of some imagined discrimination. Nonsense. The prophets sought to speak the truth, whatever the consequences. They had to be what the faith testifies they were, receivers of a word and utterance of another, a speaker who could not be domesticated by them nor by you or me. In short, they saw the Lord. They spoke the words of the Lord. Isaiah is a prime example. The prophet sees, he's afraid, the burning coal touches his mouth, he's called, and the voice of the, word of the Lord speaks. Go and say to this people, hear and hear, but do not understand. See and see, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people fat, their ears heavy. Shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes. According to Isaiah, the word of the Lord is that there are times when the word will not be heard by the people to whom the word is given. When? The New Testament says that this happened in the time of Jesus. The very verse I just quoted from Isaiah is cited in, are you ready? Matthew 13, Mark 4, Luke 8, Acts chapter 28. Four of the first five books of the New Testament, which include three of the four Gospels. Matthew 13. Jesus tells the parable of the sower, the seed can be cast on good ground and take root, but also on bad ground and not have a chance to grow. And then we read, the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak in parables? Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. With them, indeed, is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, you shall indeed hear, but never understand. You shall indeed see, but never perceive. What does this say to us? Are we the ones who hear, or the ones who do not hear? I'm not sure. 
when we enter this territory of the Bible where the Old and New Testaments dwell together, we are far from the sunny meadow of the sermon as pep talk, religion as affirmation. We're in the dark woods of the divine will, passing judgment. The word of the Lord is that there are times when the word will not be heard by the people to whom the word is given. This happened in Israel. The people rebelled against the commandments. They became stiff-necked. Like Pharaoh, their hearts were hardened. They worshiped idols. The people lost the land to their enemies. This was the judgment of God. If you follow the thread of the prophet's message into the New Testament, you soon learn that there are many who do not hear the word. Important figures in the story. Judas betrays. Peter denies. When Jesus is on the cross, his followers run away. This harsh prophetic voice of judgment is necessary to open the ears to hear. We have to be laid low in order to rise up. This is the Bible. This is life. An example. You all know about AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. It is the perfect common example. You have to reach rock bottom before you can even begin the steps. And it takes a while to get to the step in which you look in the mirror and say, this is me. And then the next step is that you have to tell your loved ones and your friends You have to become public. Yeah, we have to hit rock bottom before we are ready to confess our plight. I think this is true. I wish it were not so, but it is. So often we have to be forced to get the self out of the way so that we can hear God speak. There's no harder lesson in life. On most of my days, I really don't want to see the Lord. I only want to see me. It's a struggle. But if we confess our sins, then with the prophet, we really see the Lord. This is the lesson of repentance. I'll end with this. When I was at the beginning of my life, instead of where I am now, I was taught a simple song in the church. The same song I bet many of you were taught. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. He will wash away my sin and let his little child come in. I know better now at this stage of my life and from bitter experience what it means to be little, to be weak, to be in sin, to know I am not much beyond a child, that I need the love of Jesus. The Bible, which tells me of him, is the word of another beyond me, who, even though I don't deserve it, tells me I'm his own. I hold to this promise of the gospel, that when the day comes, I will see the Lord. Amen.
from Covenant Church. Receive this benediction today. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and mind in Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh.